Four Most Realistic Chances of Finding Alien Life Do aliens exist? That's a question mankind has asked itself for centuries. In these days, with our powerful rockets and satellites, it seems the question could possibly be answered soon. The stories on this list are ambitious and have generated buzz because they seek to answer one of humanity's biggest questions. These are the four most realistic chances of finding alien life. Number four, the Breakthrough Starshot Project. Man's curiosity knows no bounds, and in the world of science and technology, often curiosity intersects in a way that could possibly bring even the most outlandish of dreams into reality. One of the top scientific thinkers of today, Stephen Hawking, together with Facebook owner Mark Zuckerberg and Russian tycoon Yuri Milner, have teamed up to create a unique project involving tiny rockets and finding alien life. Dubbed as the Breakthrough Starshot Project, it's been deemed a philanthropic initiative. Its main goal is to discover alien life in the universe, as well as to explore deep space regions in search of planets that could potentially sustain life. In terms of particular regions, most astronomers believe that the Alpha Centauri, which is about 4.37 light years away and considered the closest star system to Earth, is comprised of planets that are deemed capable of sustaining human beings. So how exactly do they plan to investigate these far-off places? Breakthrough Starshot is hoping to launch thousands of nanocrafts, which are tiny robotic spacecrafts, into space with the ultimate goal of reaching Alpha Centauri in just 20 years plus an additional four years for the information gathered to reach back to Earth. Even though the star system is closest to our planet, with our current space technology, it would take more than 30,000 years just to reach it. These nanocrafts will be designed to be the size of postage stamps and created to fly at 20% of the speed of light. With light beams pushing it forward, they can easily fly at 1,000 times the speed of the fastest spacecraft we currently have. According to Hawking, while Earth is a fantastic planet, it might not last forever and it's time that mankind needs to start looking to the stars sooner rather than later. He considers the Breakthrough Starshot Project as among the first steps in what will become mankind's grand space journey. Aside from Hawking, Zuckerberg, and Milner, former NASA research director Pete Warden will be leading this ambitious program. It will take several years to have the first working prototypes of the nanocrafts available, but the design for them are taken from technology available to us today and what is also expected to be available in the very near future. Number 3. The Sarah Seeger Equation Frank Drake calculated the possibility of finding intelligent alien life in the far-flung universe in 1961. It's called the Drake Equation, and it was created to estimate the number of civilizations that might exist throughout the known universe. While Drake focused on finding alien life with radio technology, more recently a parallel equation was created by astronomer and planetary scientist Sarah Seeger. Her equation focuses on determining the possibility of alien life that can be detected from Earth. In comparison to Drake's, this equation eliminates one factor the L, which stands for Lifetime of Communicating Civilization. This means that instead of measuring intelligent life, this one estimates the existence of alien life by using biosignature gases. We currently have this capacity to trace gases right now using satellites and powerful space telescopes. Every time the atmosphere of a planet passes by a host star, it has a tendency to absorb some of the starlight. Right now, Earth's satellites are capable of detecting gas concentrations on our planet. With this in mind, we would simply take our space telescopes to spy on other planets' atmospheres from far away. It's crucial there's minimal noise to ensure the data gathered won't be disrupted or masked out, but this is easier said than done. When asked if any of the figures in her equation are exact or can be calculated, Seeger says that while some figures can be calculated with our current technology, there are other terms that are merely educated guesses. This includes the terms for planets that have life and the fraction that creates detectable signature gas. 
However, it's believed the equation will be more relevant once it's used in tandem with the James Webb Telescope, which will be launched later this year. The data from MIT's test mission will also greatly help in using the equation accurately. Currently, it's believed that using the Seeger equation as is, our chances of finding a planet with biosphere gases capable of supporting life, regardless of whether it's intelligent or not, in the next decade or so, is about 2%. Number 2. Elon Musk and SpaceX With the most recent launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket, the heaviest and most powerful in the world right now, it's no surprise Elon Musk is slowly on his way to bringing space, particularly Mars, closer to humanity. For years, he has spoken about his intentions to bring people to Mars and eventually create a space colony on the Red Planet. But how does he intend to do this? And above all, is it even possible? Musk has already made headway with his recent rocket launches SpaceX has grown from a startup company to the most premier privately owned space company in the entire world. And more recently, they've proven they can launch rockets capable of carrying a huge payload, which is paving the way for humans to eventually travel in them too. The 23-story Falcon Heavy was essentially a test flight for other future rockets of the same caliber. Inside it was Musk's cherry red Tesla Roadster with a mannequin donning a spacesuit. According to him, he hopes that the rocket and other improved versions will eventually be used to shuttle humans through space. More than that, he also aims to make life convenient for humans while they're traveling. SpaceX plans to run a regular passenger and cargo shuttle service between Earth and Mars, likening it to a transcontinental railway in space. He does admit it may prove trickier than simply creating the capacity to shuffle passengers around both planets. There's still infrastructure to think about, and the countless trial and error tests that have to be done to ensure the structures they create withstand the Martian planet's atmosphere. This foray into space, once successful, will eventually lead to traveling to farther regions, and obviously the search for the existence of alien life won't be overlooked. In fact, Musk believes aliens are probably monitoring his rocket launches right now, watching silently until we advance enough to merit their welcome, perhaps. Whether SpaceX manages to fulfill their goals is only a matter of time. Musk certainly seems to have the drive and resolution. The technology is still waiting to advance far enough to even make the smallest steps of the big dream a possibility, but the groundwork is certainly laid out, and the future looks bright. Number 1 government has already made contact. When it comes to talk of alien existence, it's hard not to mention the government. For many, there's a growing conspiracy that we don't really need to find out if UFOs exist because the government has already made contact. They're just keeping it a secret from the rest of us. From Roswell to the mysterious existence of Area 51, the government has been accused of doing an extensive job of covering up the truth about aliens throughout the years. But slowly, they seem to be lifting the veil of secrecy on their UFO programs. They still won't fully admit to contact or if there's an active program seeking extraterrestrial life, but certain classified documents along with former officials speaking out are starting to reveal that the government knows more than they're letting on. Take Area 51 for example. The U.S. government once strongly denied the facility even existed in the first place. But in fact, this place was used for testing the high-altitude U-2 reconnaissance plane along with other stealth and spy aircrafts. The existence of it is now undeniable, and conspiracy theorists believe it's a facility used to hide alien life, secret technologies, and other supernatural phenomenon, which is the real reason the government denied it was real in the first place. In addition, they've also denied they had a program studying UFOs, but recently the Pentagon revealed they did have a $22 million a year program whose mission was to collect and analyze aerospace threats, meaning they were studying UFOs. Important information about the study along with the release of videos showcasing military pilots and fighter jets interacting with a mysterious UFO further prove they've been looking into the subject for some time. There are countless other cases we can point to as well. 
There was the incident of photographer William Rhodes, who photographed an unusual object over Phoenix, Arizona on July 7, 1947. His photos appeared in the papers and eventually, an Army Air Force officer along with the FBI paid him a visit asking for the negatives. He surrendered them but was later told he would never be getting them back. Later on, the photos showed up in declassified Air Force UFO intelligence reports. Another incident pointing to a cover-up happened on January 22, 1958, when NICAP director Donald Kehoe was interviewed by CBS television. Apparently, his comments about UFOs were pre-censored by the Air Force, and during the live interview, they turned off the sound as Kehoe departed from the prepared script and was about to share information that they didn't want getting out. A 1967 memo, which was directed to United States Air Force Lieutenant General Hewitt Wellis, indicated there were individuals impersonating United States Air Force officers and that they had been harassing civilians, confiscating UFO materials that they had captured and telling them not to talk about it. Finally, the former division chief of the Accidents and Investigations Branch of the FAA, John Callahan, also contributed his own story. He stated that after the Japan Airlines Flight 1628 incident, where a large UFO was witnessed by the pilots as well as captured by radar, they were later briefed by the FBI and CIA, with the latter telling everyone in the meeting that they were never there and this never happened, and they claimed it was to avoid a public panic. These are just some of the countless instances where the government actively sought to suppress or keep information about UFOs from leaking out into the public. Today, suspicions against the government's UFO knowledge continues. Conspiracy theorists suspect that despite them lifting the veil on some programs and research, there's still so much more they're hiding. So there were the four most realistic chances of finding alien life. These are only four possibilities, but the reality is that there are many other things that could happen at any moment that prove once and for all that we are not alone in the universe. If you like this video, then please remember to subscribe to our channel. We have new videos coming out every Wednesday and Saturday for you to check out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.